Do you have a wall in your house that's empty, boring, and bland? I'm gonna show you how I turn this void of a wall into a board and batten wall trim, also known as Wayne's Cotting. And I'm gonna do it right now. Welcome to part two of this two-part series where we take this boring old wall and turn it into a nice beautiful board and batten trimmed wall. In the last video you'll see me take off these baseboards, sand down the wall, take out the high points, skim coat it two times and some touch-ups of course to come out with this nice beautiful smooth clean wall so when we apply the board and battens and new baseboard it's gonna look cherry. But before we get started with that, I gotta go to the shop and start cutting some baseboard because that's where we're gonna start. The outside walls of our corners are rounded, so in order to nicely get around those corners, this cut has gotta be at a 22 and a half degree angle, not a 45. I make these little pieces that, anyways, you'll see it. One of the necessary evils in this project that I have to deal with is baseboard that has nothing to do with the wall trim area that I want to work on. Now, the, the wall trim ends at, a, at, at the end of the wall and then it wraps around behind the refrigerator. I don't think, I don't remember showing you guys that part, but it does wrap around the refrigerator and the baseboard just is behind the refrigerator and then it stops right there. To go around that wall, it doesn't have 45 degree miters because the wall stucco is curved. So I have these little pieces that makes it go around the wall like this. Now these aren't 45 degree angles, they are 22.5, which is half of the 45. The whole house is like this. Now instead of putting each piece up against the wall, what I'm going to do is just glue this whole piece together and then put it on so it's all level and straight. Sometimes getting the baseboard seems to line up just perfectly top to bottom and along this edge can be sometimes difficult. So I think that's a pretty good idea, just making one whole piece, slapping it on there. Here are these baseboards, I'm using my Ryobi brad nailer with one and a half inch brad nails. I'm using my magnetic stud finder, the stud buddy, to find each stud as I go along. That way I can find the studs real easy when I'm putting in the baseboards. I'll leave a link in the description for you. It's a great tool. It just lines it right up and points in the direction where those brad nails need to go. I was having trouble getting this to be flush here and flush here. So I went ahead and took some three by five cards and taped them to the back as well as underneath here, cut up some strips. Now when I place it up here, press up, it's flush here, it's flush here. After a little brad nailing and caulking, it's gonna look perfect. Time to get that trim on. We're gonna do the top rail first. Work our way from there. Let's go. I got my trusty assistant here. Remember earlier when the Brad Nailer popped all that? sheetrock off the wall near the baseboard well this is me explaining the situation about that my mic wasn't working so let me explain I went ahead and applied the joint compound smoothed it out for the first layer and then my wife comes downstairs I said hey hun look what I did and she goes wow and puts her finger right in the wet joint compound so uh, we had a good laugh about that and I went ahead and uh, smoothed it out best I could I said it was no big deal because just the first coat I'll be applying a second coat as well, sanding it over, and I have touch-up paint to make it look as good as new. For the trim piece by the door, I put a seven degree angle here because this is not at 90 degrees. And also I put a 45 right here because this piece sticks out farther 
than this trim. So I just did that for a little bit of aesthetic appeal so it didn't look so, so awful. But after I do that, I, I think it looks even better. The railing is in and the baseboards are on. Now, the next step is putting in the battens. There's 22 feet on this wall. Every two feet we can put a batten in. So that makes it about 11 battens, unless we're counting the ends as well. I haven't counted, maybe that's 12. Well, we'll figure it out. Take some time, gonna make a mind, gonna make a mind. sideways the brad nails are less likely to skew out this side the beveling of the nail allows it to go this way or this way but it won't go this way typically so that's why you hold the gun sideways the battens went up phenomenally except for a couple of them right here at the edge it still has a little bit of give. There's no stud behind here, just brad nails securing it. But I want this flush. I want them all flush. And I got an idea. Loctite Premium Construction Adhesive. Cement top coffee table, it's the ultimate clamp. And a little plywood for a buffer. Check to see if it's flush, and that's right on. We'll let this sit here for a while so it can dry. The label says it takes 24 hours to dry, so uh, it'll be here probably for the night. It's been 24 hours, let's see what we got. So little to no give, and only a hair sticks over. And I think that's acceptable. It's time to put on the base shoe. Don't confuse base shoe with quarter round. They're totally not the same. When putting on baseboard and dealing with the seam from the floor to the baseboard, you want that gap to look sharp. And because this is not the original flooring, getting that gap to look perfect is very difficult to do. But you can mask it with a little base shoe and it adds a little extra contour texture to the look. So here we go. 